Well, the next talk I'm going to give is about uh, BCG unresponsive disease. Uh, Dr. Lerner alluded to some of this already, and, and so I'm just going to talk a little bit more in depth about what the definition is and uh, what the treatment options are. So no relevant disclosures here. Uh, just some learning objectives. Uh, number one, recognize the difference, uh, different definitions of BCG failure and BCG unresponsive disease. Outline the management options for patients with BCG unresponsive disease and discuss some of the uh, clinical trials we have for these patients. So here, here's just a brief outline. I'm going to start with the natural history of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer just to uh, give us a little background. And so in general, about 80%, you know, 75 to 80% of patients will present with non-muscle invasive disease. The majority of those are papillary. You get your mix of T1 and, and uh, CIS in there as well. And how, what we do know about the natural history is it's very heterogeneous. It's hard to predict what's going to happen exactly. But we do know two kind of characteristic things. These tumors can recur and they can progress. And so the recurrence rate um, can be as high as 70% with TUR alone. The progression rate can be you know, upwards of 30 plus or more uh, with TUR alone. So because of that, we, we know that TUR alone isn't going to handle it. So BCG is the standard of care for patients with uh, intermediate or high risk uh, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Uh, we've known that it's superior to intravesical chemotherapy. This is supported by numerous trials and, and meta-analyses. Um, it's endorsed by the AUA, the EAU, and NCCN guidelines. And uh, we know that we get best results when we give induction as well as maintenance. And so the maintenance courses can vary based on the risk of the patient. And as Dr. Cookson mentioned earlier, intermediate risk uh, cancer, you want to give one year of maintenance. And then if you have higher risk cancer, you want to give three years of maintenance. What's the optimal maintenance protocol? There's several out there, but I think the generally accepted one is based off that SWOG uh, trial, which is three we weekly installations at 3, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36 months. And so that's based off the data from the SWOG trial, the 8507 trial, which uh, Dr. Lerner uh, showed some evidence here as well. But patients who got maintenance versus those who did not get maintenance uh, had an overall improved recurrence-free survival, 82% versus 62% at two years, and it held on a little bit further, 60 versus 41%. So maintenance should be given to these patients and should be given to every patient with high-risk uh, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Well, the, well, herein lies the issue is, is that we know it's that, that uh, uh, non-invasive bladder cancer will recur and may progress. And so there's a subset of patients that get BCG that will fail. And so 50% will occur after initial induction of those. Maybe about 30% will respond to an additional course of BCG. But nonetheless, if you don't treat these guys or identify these patients accordingly, um, they will have poor outcomes. And so that leads me to the next, ne next uh, topic is how do we define BCG failure? And there's so many different definitions out there, and I think this is one of them. And so there can be four different main types that were traditionally published. One was intolerant, meaning the patient cannot tolerate the side effects. Resistant means that you get BCG, you still have disease at three months, but at six months it's gone. So it was initially resistant, but you get a six-month uh, response. And that six-month mark is, is, is important. Relapsing is, is that you respond at six months and it comes back. And there's three different kind of uh, relapsing categories. Early, within 12 months, intermediate, which is 12 to 24, or late, greater than 24 months. Patients who have a late relapse, meaning they had an initial response, you give them some time, they recur down the road two or more years, they have better responses to another go around of BCG again, versus if you have an early response. And the last one is refractory. That means at that six month time period, you, uh, you still have uh, persistent disease. Um, or as Dr. Lerner mentioned, if you have high-grade T1 and you have high-grade T1 at the three-month mark after your first uh, indu induction BCG, that's considered refractory. So why is six months important? Um, six months is kind of the time period that, that you can truly define patients as, as uh, refractory. They declare themselves. If you give someone BCG for three months and, and you scope them and there's cancer there, they may respond to another course. And so there's a study done by her which showed that if, if you look at the recurrence-free survival at three months and six months, you really get the true separation at that six-month time period. So I think that's why the six-month time period is, has held true for that. Well, the FDA, um, in conjunction with um, you know, several stakeholders in 2018, published a guideline on what truly defines BCG 
unresponsive disease, which is unlike all the four categories I mentioned earlier. And it kind of combines refractory and relapsing in it as well. And so what they defined is, is well, what's adequate BCG? Adequate BCG is you got to get at least five plus two. So round one, you get five of six. And round two, you get two of six if you're going to do a second induction or two of three if you're going to do a second maintenance. So you have to have at least five plus two. And then they have these three different categories that define unresponsive. So if you got adequate BCG, if, if you got adequate BCG, which is at five plus two, and you have CIS um, within a year of the last BCG, then you are considered unresponsive. So that's one, the one year mark. If you have adequate BCG, again, five plus two, and you have a TA tumor within six months of your last BCG, you're considered unresponsive. And here's the other special one. If you have high grade T1 after your induction BCG, and you still have high grade T1 at that three month, you are considered unresponsive. So um, again, that reflects a higher risk uh, uh, patient there. So now that we've kind of defined some of these definitions, we've declared what an unresponsive patient is, you know, what are the management options for these patients? And so if you look at the guidelines, the European and American Urologic Association guidelines for these, the goal, you know, the go-to answer is radical cystectomy. So for in these patients, if you have BCG unresponsive disease, you should get your bladder out. But we all know that a lot of patients are unwilling to do that. A lot of patients aren't fit enough to, to tolerate the surgery. So what do we do in those patients? Uh, here's another uh, very large uh, flow chart of a very complicated flow chart of, uh, from the AUA guidelines. And basically, in the center here is cystectomy. All roads lead to cystectomy if you fail BCG twice. Again, five plus two is, is what you define, it, define that as. If you don't want to get cystectomy, you're unwilling or unfit to do it, then what do you do? There's two options here in this box. You do a clinical trial if you have one available, or you do some type of intravesical therapy. Uh, again, none of them are uh, home runs. I'm going to go through some of the data with, about that in a second. And so what are the options? I've listed a few of them here. There are several other ones, but I'm going to go through the, some of the relevant data here and, and the treatment uh, options for it. And in this group of patients, this BCG unresponsive patient who doesn't want a cystectomy and says, well, give me, give me another shot, give me another line of, of treatment, what are we looking for? What, are the, what, are the, what does the FDA want? It's not very good. The bar isn't very high. It's, you want to have a one-year recurrence-free survival of 30%. I mean, 70% are not going to respond to this therapy. So I think it's important that patients know that. There's really no home runs in this space. It's a very high-risk uh, patient population. So... Uh, first one I want to talk about is Valrubicin, which is Valstar. Um, this is FDA approved. They did a phase three uh, trial where patients got six-week induction of uh, Valrubicin. This was patients with CIS only, and they had must have failed prior intravesical therapy. So the six-month complete response rate was 21%. That's not very good. And overall, if you give it time, at 30 months, only 8% remained NED. So this is what we have that is FDA approved in this space, um, and it's not very good. So despite this FDA approval, uh, we still have a poor long-term disease-free survival, which really underscores the need for better or additional bladder uh, conserving therapies in this group. And so uh, so what, what, what are the things we can do? Uh, gemcitabine. Gemcitabine is an agent that inhibits DNA synthesis. It was first um, uh, reported in 2002 as being safe in phase one trials. There's several trials that are out. I wanted to discuss the SWOG trial, which is a phase two trial. And they looked at 47 patients who had, you know, high risk of cancer that got at least two courses of BCG. They got two grams of gemcitabine at 100 cc's for six weeks as their induction course. And they continued it monthly for a year. So it's uh, for a total of a year. And what was their data there? About 20, about 28% um, recurrence free survival. Again, not, a, you know, not a home run. 24 months is a little bit less. What about taxanes? That's another agent you can give. What do they do? They inhibit microtubular, microtubule depolymerization. Um, and there are several phase one, phase two trials here in this space. Um, in a study done by Barlow, where they looked at 54 patients, uh, they found that uh, the disease-free survival at 12 months was about 40%. Most of these patients were high grade. Most of these patients had CIS. Again, at this time, the BCG failure, how much BCG should you get to define Failure wasn't, you know, wasn't, wasn't out, so it was just they only failed one prior BCG. Uh, there's also paclitaxel, which is bound um, uh, to a nanoparticle with albumin. As phase two studies showed, again, one-year recurrence-free survival around that 30% mark. 
um, they got it uh, 500 and uh, 500 milligrams and 100 cc's monthly uh, 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 and monthly maintenance for six months. Other things you can do is you know heat up chemotherapy and instill it in the bladder. So what does that do? Uh, if you heat it up to 41 to 44 degrees uh, Celsius, they propose that uh, there's uh, more direct cytotoxic effect, and you might take up the chemotherapy better and get a better response. And so, Arends um, uh, published in 2014, looking at patients who had uh, about 129 patients, 80 percent of them had BCG failure. And they had a recurrence-free survival of 60 percent in two years, and 47 percent. Again, and also intermixed in here are non-BCG failure patients. There's different systems on how you can heat the chemotherapy and get it into the bladder. One is you have a, a, a catheter that has a thermal couple on it that actually heats the, the chemotherapy within the bladder. And then the other one is a recirculation system, which heats it on the outside and circulates it through this three-way catheter, again, to deliver uh, hyperthermic chemotherapy. Some more experimental stuff is photodynamic therapy. What do they do? They instill a photosensitizing agent similar to what we use uh, for blue light, which is the hexaminolevulonic acid, but there's various sensitizing agents. And if you excite it with a certain wavelength of light, it will kill all those cells. You know, the issue is, is you want to probably kill a lot of cells with it. And that's what some of the phase one trials did show. So it's still really early on and it's got variable response rate. And what about BCG plus interferon? So adding on interferon to it, several smaller studies which show, uh, you know, 50, 60% uh, recurrence-free survival in about a month. Uh, I think some of the best data or evidence we have is a phase two trial looking at about a thousand patients. Um, and basically, if you look at the group of patients that were that had BCG failure at 24 months, the two-year recurrence-free survival is 45 percent, which probably was some of the highest higher numbers that we have. Who did better? It was the patients that had fewer co prior courses of BCG. Those responded better. And, um, and basically patients that had refractory disease, which is this bottom line here, had the worst survival. So again, not everybody in this group had the unresponsive BCG definition. They had some were relapsing, that's why they failed, some were refractory. Um, and so it's again, a heterogeneous population. So, so what can we do? Uh, there are several clinical trials here. Dr. Lerner alluded to some of these already. There's different agents. There's uh, interferon that you can transfect into urothelial cells with an adenovirus vector, you've got recombinant proteins, you've got mycobacterial cell wall complex. So there's a variety of different agents that they're exploring, all in the clinical trial setting. Several trials that are out, uh, out right now, some even are using immunotherapy, pembrolizumab, and tezolizumab for patients that have, um, have unresponsive bladder cancer. So again, the future is pretty wide open in terms of what we can do. The bar that we're trying, that they're setting is one year recurrence free survival of 30%. So that's what everyone's trying to get. So just to conclude everything, uh, BCG induction plus maintenance is the standard management for patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Despite getting BCG therapy, there's gonna be a subgroup that are gonna be, that are not gonna respond and they're gonna be considered unresponsive. Unresponsive to BCG means you got at least five plus two of uh, uh, BCG therapy, and there's three different categories. If you have high grade after induction, you fail, or if you have CIS within a year or, or high grade TA within six months of your last BCG, that's considered unresponsive. What are the treatment options? Gold standard is still gonna be cystectomy, but you're gonna get those patients that are unfit, unwilling to do it. And so what do we do in those patients? You can, if there's a clinical trial available, you can try to enroll them in one of those. You can consider intravesical uh, chemotherapy, gemcitabine, or the taxanes that I mentioned earlier. Uh, FDA approved for CIS only is Valstar, which again, doesn't have a durable long-term uh, uh, recurrence-free survival. All right, thank you very much.